Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this one, we've got a special one. We're doing a Q&A with Top Shot Talk, answering all your questions. We cover a lot of the Nine Lives Lounge, the market reaction today, Summer League, and much, much more. Let's get straight into it. Now, I know many of you have entered into this world via Top Shot. And if you're looking to branch out into more NFTs, I have an opportunity for you. Lucky Maniki NFTs are giving Ballers blockchain viewers the chance to win three of their NFTs. Maniki Neko is famous for the luck it brings to for those who cross their path. That is at the core of what Lucky Maniki is out to fulfill, bringing luck to its owners. But it's not just luck, they have daily offerings of ETH, NFT raffles, challenges, quests to win rare Manikis, exclusive access to future mint drops, like the one to one free mints of the Avatar Maniki collection coming this August, or the three for one mint of the 3D Maniki collection coming out later this year. And everyone that shows up into their general chat of their Discord and drop hashtag Bowlers Blockchain will automatically go into the running to win three lucky Maniki NFTs. This will give you access to three avatar mints and one of the 3D mints as that drop happens. So don't miss out on some of this cool art and shoot your shot for your chance to win. Head over to the Discord. The link is in the description below to enter the competition and drop hashtag Ballers Blockchain. And thank you, Lucky Manic EFT, for offering this opportunity to the viewers of Ballers Blockchain. Let's get straight into the video. All right, TST, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing, man? Well, well, well. Did you see this really, really cool booth? I certainly did. I've been watching it all day. Super jealous of all those that got to be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully we'll see some moments from this in the marketplace or something coming up soon, eh? We should maybe by tomorrow. Nice. So anyway, we are going to talk about um, all of the questions that guys have submitted through our Discord, which is which is labeled collectively TSTBB. If you want to join that, it will be in the description below and you can join a really cool community that has started there. And in that community, we ask questions so we can answer them together and go through and basically address the things that you're concerned about or what's on your mind. And obviously this week, there was a lot of Nine Lives Lounge stuff that we're gonna go through and questions around that. Um, what were your initial thoughts around the Nine Lives Lounge? Uh, initial thoughts were basically that they delivered, they over-delivered. Um, it's not like they haven't been telling us this for months and people were making fun of them because, you know, oh, this Discord, this Discord, oh, great, I get to be part of a Discord. You know what? They they certainly made it worth it. Uh, you know, the, that those moments are now going to be worth a ton for a very long time, I think. I don't think what we've seen is going to be the only things they get going forward. But yeah. in general... Um, I think that they delivered and they warned us, so. Yeah, that's right, they absolutely did warn us. So I'm gonna show a few things, let's get this out of the way. Of all the sets um, that aren't legendary, Cool Cats is smashing it in terms of the last seven days of how much it's increased. Um, cool Cats itself, the floor was like three, two, and it immediately jumped to, wow, look at where it is now, 6,006. Lamello himself um, has had a significant rise. You can Now he's more than <laughs> what the set was, which is ridiculous. Um, but in turn, what I also wanted to highlight was there's been other sets that have had a massive rise as well. And this is going to go hand in hand with a lot of our questions. So Rising Stars went from... 2.7 to 4.6. Uh, seeing Stars had a massive bump as well. They went from about 1,000 to 1,600. Metallic Gold Series 2 had a little bit of a bump as well. You can see that in the graph. The graph kind of over, over accentuates it a little bit. All-Star Game even, this rare set had a bump from 29, 2,700 all the way to 4,000. And the base set series two, whilst the floor in your video, which was well highlighted, has remained the same, a lot of these badge moments have really moved a lot. So obviously Lamello, Edwards, Halliburton, which interestingly is what, one, two, three of the rookies this year. James, Wiseman, Durant. Um, so three badge rookies and a few superstars have had a good seven day increase in percentage in their value. So yeah, based on those increases, um, and we've had questions on this, like someone is giving the example, um, they were thinking of getting the all-star set for maybe tickets to next year's all-star game. Do you think those are possibilities? I mean, it's, it's possible, but it's very presumptuous, isn't it? So to 
I think people are assuming that seeing stars is worth their due and rising stars is worth their due because the same, not the same people, but a lot of people went through, you know, the expensive time to collect these sets as well, not just Cool Cats. So I think the utilities and stuff that are being offered to the Cool Cats group is great. Um, and the access that they are getting to Roam and, and so on, the access is really unreal. If for them, if the goal is for Top Shot to get feedback, there are other segments I think that can offer feedback. A lot of high profile people didn't do the Cool Cats collection, just as an example. So the problem with the winners is there's always people that miss out and, and some are more vocal than others about that and, and missing out saying, you know, oh, what's next for seeing stars? So I think there's a bit of presumption going on there about what sets are next. We knew that Cool Cats was gonna happen. I don't know definitively right now that there's going to be something for other sets i don't think there's going to be something for other sets in this way um this cool cats thing is not coming out of nowhere they've been yelling this for months like non-stop um i think some people have this misconception with seeing stars that they're supposed to get something because one office hour a long, long, long time ago, they basically said, yeah, we have something in mind. And then there was the Ben Simmons quest that you seen stars. And I think that's what it was. I think that like, that's all it was. Um, I don't think that that's, they're going to have their own discord with packs being given to them and, you know, getting access to them. Um, also with these sets increasing, I think a lot of, the increase is just also with the fact who's in them. So I think there is some people thinking that, but the scene stars had all the all-stars. So if we've seen all the commons of these players, there's no reason that the scene stars would increase as well. So there's kind of a mixed thing. Uh, when it comes to like the all-star game, I, I do think that what we'll see though is possibly with these activations, like we saw for uh, the finals, for the draft, for summer league, that they might use the all-star set. I don't think it'll be limited to the people that completed it. I don't think that they'll say everyone that completed it gets to go. I, don't get me wrong. I hope I'm wrong for those that do have it. But I think it'll be something uh, similar to how they did the Lamello MGLE. I think that it'll be like, oh, you have every three scene stars you have, you get an entry. Oh, for every all-star, you get one entry. You know, And they mix the, all those things that have to do with all-star weekend will maybe be your tickets for, uh, you know, winning, being one of those eight collectors, maybe by then it's even more, but I don't think there's going to be these giant things revolving around sets. Um, other than maybe, you know, channels in their discord, like, Oh, you get into this special channel, but not that you get anything for being there, just that you get access to that channel. Yeah. And, and two things I wanted to say also, like, Overall, the market is up and your video explains a lot of good reasons collectively why that's the case, not just one thing being the Nine Lives Lounge being announced. Um, it was a number of things. And the second thing is they are exploring a lot of utility across the board and we just don't know exactly what they are going to be, but we know that they are going to do lots and lots more. But yeah, you're right. In terms of seeing stars, it was mentioned once. We we hunt through all the office hours for this information and there's not, you know, breadcrumbs to follow like there was with this with the cool cats. Yeah, breadcrumbs so, are breadcrumbs or them with a megaphone yelling. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's a good question. <clears throat> Here's a good question. Would you would it be worth selling some of these rare and legendaries to obtain this sort of set, the Cool Cat set. So uh, the question really is, should I sell some stuff and get the Cool Cat set instead? The Cool Cat set itself, or or are they asking any set? Cool Cats because of the utility um, and the reward for it. Uh, so I, I was talking to someone on Twitter and they asked me an interesting question. It was, would I rather have a Top Shot debut of Luca and a Top Shot debut of Steph? or the cool cats and they're the same price basically right now wow. and the fact that i'm debating this i think is astounding because like those two moments are way better those are like you know 
Steph's an all-time great already, and Luca is certainly on pace to be one eventually. Um, but I'd, I think I'd almost lean Cool Cats right now. Um, but yeah. a lot of that has to do with the fact that I almost bought LaMelo so many times recently, and I'm really kicking myself that I didn't. Um, and it's new or whatever, but I do think that this thing is going to have utility for a long time to come. So, um, depends on what your rare and legendaries are and how much you hold on to them personally. So like, is this just like the legendary that you pulled in a pack that really you don't have any affiliation with then? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And that's a good point in that it's kind of feels silly, doesn't it? um you'd much rather collect those two players from a fan point of view but then you, you're jealous of the access and utility from a collector point of view and it is that list of stuff that utility is unreal like you definitely want some of that um i personally never really liked the cool cat set cool cats set i just didn't really want to uh invest in like some of the players i weren't bothered on and you know i wasn't really i have a few cool cats but of the players that i like like steph and ozzy simmons and, and various others so i just never really got attached to it in that way even when it was cheap yeah like my reasoning to do it before was always because i expected big things to come um, I didn't think they would be this big. And I think more so I didn't think the market would react as much was kind of the thing that didn't quite click for me. I I was always thinking that it, it was worth it. And I almost pulled the trigger many times because of that. But that's really um, what did it for me is that they gave so much right away. So maybe that's really what gave the market reacting to that. Uh, the next question is, why use a set of only 30 to be in such an in exclusive environment? Um, this one's interesting because I think what people are trying to get at this is that like, oh, it's just 30 commons or whatever. Why not have to have some rares or, you know, have an, done an MGLE challenge, whatever. It's, it's solely because they wanted to make this Cool Cat Master Challenge something uh, important and kind of a flagship of Top Shot because that was their goal, I think, when they started this Master Challenge. There wasn't supposed to be this crazy run-up where everyone got completely screwed on it, um, but it was supposed to be the big thing all year, and they weren't supposed to blow up like they did. Um, so they just kind of are following through on this, and you know they've, they've said all along that this was going to happen. Um, and they did everything they promised and more. Yeah, I, 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 I can't remember the exact time, but I always remember the price of the Cool Cat set before, um, I don't know, I think it was the Rome office hours or something like that, and it was literally like 1700 for the lot. Uh, it was only there briefly, and then it ballooned when another announcement came or another carrot was dangled saying that you know this, this reward was going to happen. And now that it has happened in typical Top Shot market fashion, the knee-jerk reaction is significant and thorough. Um, and we haven't obviously seen it sort of wave and leveled yet, possibly, uh, or plateaued. But maybe it will stay this way. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's, it's very interesting. I always find it fascinating to see how the market reacts to things. I thought I saw something... Um, someone would can maybe correct me in the comments or something. I thought I saw something on Twitter or somewhere, someone talking about how uh, when they do the snapshots, if you have Lamello listed, or I, I assume any part of your Cool Cats, that if it's listed, you won't get the snapshot. Um, oh, I saw something like that as well. Yeah. So that would mean that this thing is going to hold more value probably um, in general because there's going to be so few listings because the people that will want it, they'll really only be putting up when they want to sell. But I know there's also a number of people that have multiple. So people that yeah. have multiple will uh, will definitely can still list one and they'll be okay for that. And there are a few smart people that um, kept cool cats and not much else, knowing that this was sort of coming as well. So I guess that makes, I mean, an argument around are the right collectors being rewarded but wherever there's a winner there's a loser i guess is the point um and i don't think you can ever get that 100 percent right uh i think you've got the next one 
Yeah. So uh, if we're talking about, you know, the future of Cool Cats and everything, there's a question that kind of aligns with that. And it's what would you do with 25 of the 30 Cool Cat moments? Hold them and hope for a dip or sell off, seeing the initial perks will be used up by then or all in, save up and finish it. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like they need to save up to finish it from the, the people that are asking, but it, I'm on the fence in that. <laughs> If, you, if you're that way close to the finish line, you think you'd want to finish it. Um, at the same time, the right time to buy has just passed because we're in the we're in the reaction phase and, and you're, you're buying on the high, let's be honest. So I think it's based on an individual cost analysis of whether or not you should do that, how much dapper you've got, what you'd have to sacrifice to get into it, how valuable those utilities are to you. Like, are you going to use them uh, or are you just buying a motorbike because it's cool? I think there's a number of different approaches to that based on the individual. Yeah. My approach to this basically is um, if you have 25 out of 30 and neither of those are Lamello or Luca, it's pretty much the same of having zero right now um, for the decision you're going to make from a monetary way. Uh, you know, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but just um, Lamello on his own is like two thirds of the price. Add in Luca, you're probably looking at another thousand or so. What's he at right now? So Lamello, low ask four one, Luca twelve hundred. And what's the whole thing? Six something. Yeah, six six. So like you know, you add up Luca and Lamello, you only have fifteen hundred left. So if you don't have either of those right now, then I don't see much of a difference. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily like sell all those and never like if you plan on maybe wanting to get into this in the future, uh, then yeah, you can save those. But um, I don't think that like the perks they just listed are the end of it. So I do think that a lot of the amazing things are there, but I think there'll be things over time that come up. So if you wait for it to kind of lower and then get in, then it might end up being worth it for you, but you're you're definitely paying a premium if you if you're doing that in the next week or so. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because those two have always been worth collectively as much as the rest of them combined. So that's a massive point. So some someone in our Discord added when I googled Nine Lives Lounge, I, that it came up with this <laughs> cat cafe. What would it, it looks comfortable? What would have been awesome is if like they had made this site and then, like, <laughs> and then like the day it launched or whatever, like it flips to like the real thing or whatever. But like for like days, people were just like, what is this going on? There were some good gifts on, um, on Twitter around cats and that would have been good to include as well. Um, I don't know. Have fun with it, I guess. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, how will these summer league moments, so we're talking about uh, obviously the summer league fandom moments now, affect our collector scores as far as team completions go? Uh, I've recently purchased Andrew Bogut, which I had to save up for, for one of the bottlenecks. Um, they've outlined that they've fought hard to get that Bogut, and especially since the summer league moments will only be available for, well, a lot less people. So... TST, what are your thoughts? Uh, so first of all, congratulations on getting Bogut. That's a big, uh, that's a big get. Um, sec <laughs> yeah. Second of all, uh, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect at all. I think they're going to pick players that already have moments and pretty much all the second year players are back on the same team. So it won't really create anything. Um, there's also the fact that each collector can get 10 of these. Um, so that really helps with the amount that are going to be minted. Uh, there was a huge lineup at the booth from people like Moment Ranks that were updating us on Twitter and stuff. So I think there's going to be a decent amount of these on the market. Um, but I think they're going to pick a player that already has a moment with that team because uh, they don't want to maybe even answer that question to would it even change collector score at all. And um, if you read their recent blog kind of recapping day one or whatever, when they go to the preview of the game, they're talking about players with that have moments already. So it really seems like they're going to pick uh, them. And it, it seems like they want to pick Sadiq Bey. That would be my guess. If Sadiq Bey has a good play in this game that I guess is maybe halfway 
done right now, I would say that they're going to pick Sadiq Bay. Yeah, I was going to point out a lot of the, the sophomores are in on the Pistons as well, but also technically this is a different series. This is series summer or series 2.5, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and your collector scores are all based on series two or series one or full team sets. So they also stated in an office hours they didn't want to do a rug pull and they won't do that on collector scores. So um, I'd imagine something quite detached and unaffecting to the already series two teams and bonuses. And I think that they'll kind of always do that with these moments. Uh, I don't think they'll ever do a Top Shot debut as a uh, fandom tier because that also doesn't fall in line with how they have the different mint counts based on if it's a Top Shot debut or whatnot. Uh, I don't think they'll really, uh, it won't be rookies first moments or anything. I think these fandom tier in general is going to be kind of not the greatest quality of moments either, which is kind of disappointing if you're there, but they're going to have to save those for, you know, the MGLEs, the hollows. Um, they're going to want those to be able to show off that you could get this in a pack. Um, but where we'll get some cool fandom tier ones, I think is from like the quest and stuff like that. Well, yeah. And this is just the uh, launch of fandom tier as well. So it's going to hover between the common and the rare to do these fluctuating little mint counts of whatever it could be for the quests and or challenges or whatever so yeah i agree and i think what we'll see first kind of that we see that fluctuation will be when we get an mgle quest that'll be coming up yeah yeah all right next one all right um so is the new average price tracking tool useful or misleading i'm just not a fan of averages if serial number matter any thoughts if this feature helped lead to the current bull run? No. <laughs> no. So I, I always think more information is helpful. So it can be misleading. But so, then again, so was the lowest ask. The lowest ask was often misleading. And um, I mean, if you follow, let's say, Girl Dad, uh, he or that group will often identify flaws which are weak i.e. you can buy a couple of moments and all of a sudden the floor is X amount more. Lowest ask gives you a skew away from the average sale. The average sale gives you a skew away from the lowest ask. So I think more information helps in any way, shape or form. And whenever people are buying, um, they should be buying it with love or informed decisions either way. Um, so I think more information helps overall, I guess is my overall takeaway. Yeah, I agree with that. I would say, you know, some people have suggested median sale as a better uh, thing. Um, I would say if you're not doing median sale, omit uh, a certain percentage of the serial numbers above um, just to not get it skewed. And like I suggested, I put it in my maybe two videos ago and on Twitter, I put it. Um, I think we need to provide information if that moment has been in a challenge request in the last two weeks. Um, cause we really saw, uh, the ones that were in the Quavo quest, um, you know, they they came back to the price that, you know, was fair market value for those moments. Um, and then their average sales was like six, $7 above that because of the quest utility that was recently removed from them. So if I was a new user at that point, I might be looking at this moment and saying, oh, this is a good deal. Um, when in reality, it's just a fair deal, kind of. Yeah, and um, and you you made a point that I missed about you know we have seen fluctuations in moment prices when they have utility specific to challenges or other things quests. Um, and I asked Jacob this, you know, is things like conf collector score too confusing for new users? And that would also happen if, if you were going to buy a moment and they had challenge utility and they didn't know what challenge was live right now because they hadn't, they're not on Twitter or whatever else, uh, they're not following the blog, that could mislead them as, as well and um, possibly frustrate them. So maybe it also needs more information again, like uh, on certain third party sites, there'll be a badge saying, hey, this has actually got a challenge utility happening right now. And so maybe it needs some of that. I know they've improved the search function to have, you know, you can just click on the challenge and it will bring up the moments that you need for said challenge. So just thinking off the cuff, maybe that's another idea that they can bring forward as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, do you think eventually there will be a bump for most moments or only the high moment premium, only the premium ones? Also, if you have a roadmap to follow for collecting, would you rather go after sets, team sets, or moments you love or anything else? Bit of a loaded question, that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's start with the first part and then I'll get back to the roadmap. So, do you think all moments will get a bump? No. Um, I don't think so. Um, if it's your, you know, average player on an average team, there's not going to be much there if it has no other things attached to it, whether it be a bottleneck, it's, you know, the floor is a little higher because that team has an easy team collector score, whatever it might be. If we're just talking like a value of a moment, uh, no, things aren't going to skyrocket. They've dealt with the amount of supply. Um, there are a couple things that will happen though. I think when trade-in tickets happen, uh, we're going to get a bump of the floor and that's everything all over. Um, and that will be super interesting and even more interesting now because the fact that uh, a lot of series one moments, especially there's some superstar players that are going to be in those packs have really gone up. Those packs are now a lot more worth it. I think they've, they haven't quite doubled in EV but probably about like 60 to 75% increased EV since the, the uptick recently, which is extremely substantial for when people are debating whether to go for it or not. So we will see the floor rise at that point. Um, and then I have my theory that they're going to change collector score and it's going to make series two worth it more. So um, whether that's true or not, but then you could see a, a raise in the floor at that point too. Yeah, those are good. Those are good points, and they they will take what it takes to um, raise the floor, especially trade tickets. When when that got that blog came out, that significantly raised the floor, but not continuously. It was again, it was a knee jerk, and it came back to the fair market value for what we have right now. And I think your video made a great point about um, the new limits were one of the factors that helped this sort of market reaction. Um, to bringing crypto money in. Um, and I think a lot of that crypto space values scarcity and that prestige of ownership. Um, whereas the mainstream adopters or new users that are being onboarded, they are more likely to go for some of these floor prices of their favorite players, whether it be, um, you know, the heat team or, or anything else that are valued at $3. Like, Patty Mills is often dropping at $3 and I don't mind them, you know, but that's just me. Uh, mm -hmm. You have no affiliation or love with Patty Mills as a Raptors fan and a Canadian. So everyone's different in that sense and values what they value. Um, so yeah, I think those are valid points. If you have to follow a roadmap for your collecting, would you rather go after sets, team sets, moments, or anything else? Uh, for me, going after sets, I'm not a huge fan of it particularly. Um, I would love to, I love MGLEs now. Um, I don't like any set that has alternative art. So um, I, I like hollows, I like MGLEs, and I like the base set. Um, and then the even, core sets. Yeah, the core sets. I don't know if we are including playoffs in that just yet. Um, I, I'm not a, the huge fan of the aesthetics of it, but I can learn to love it, I think, if it becomes a core set. Um, so I'm not like huge on sets in general because um, I don't have the bankroll for the, those sets that I do like. Uh, team sets like just for collector score and the fact that I'd be collecting a bunch of Raptors anyways. Um, so I, I love that aspect of it. Actually, when that got introduced, it kind of like directed my collecting to more what I loved. Um, and then I'm just looking at, you know, either players I like or cool moments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's more, uh, that's right. I, I did enjoy collecting the Warriors set apart from Nico Mannion because I just knew he was, I had my doubts. He was good in the he was good in the Olympics though. He played some good games, but just for the Warriors, he's just not much. And um, but I like, and I didn't know this until I started Top Shot. I really like collecting Australian um, moments, and everyone, especially who represented the Olympic team. So I'd love there to be. Um, I don't wait, know, wait, wait, wait! All the Australians. I assumed you were just talking about stacking Ben Simmons. No, no. I, I have a lot of Ben Simmons, but I mean, oh, man, I'm getting smashed on some of the Australians with, with between Aaron Baines and Ben Simmons. Um, yeah, I tell you what, let's stay positive. I will be stacking Paddy Mills Nets moments, 100%.
watch they'll come out now is some sort of mgle that i can't afford to stack too much <laughs> mgle and then he's traded so that he's the only <laughs> oh come on don't say that siakam's gonna break his ankle <laughs> wow. Shots fired. Oh, we're just hating now um all right assuming you stay at your current age and basketball ability how old would lebron james have to be before you could beat him at a game of one-on-one -on -one? I want to say 50. <laughs> but so not so you actually think it's possible ever. Yes, definitely. Um, oh, you stay at your current age. Yeah. And again, I'm not taking good. ownership of this. This comes from our Discord, which yeah. has a sense of humor, thank goodness. <laughs> I, um, I love First of all, I love these types of questions that we get a couple of these thrown in every time. I love these. The Muggsy Bogues one last time was unbelievable. Um I, I will say f I I would say 50 for like a normal person, but based on the way LeBron has been aging, I think like him at 50 is really him at like 40. Um, so I'll, I'll probably say 50, 55 to 60 if I can have like a week to get myself in, in shape. The guy spends a million shots. bucks on his body every yeah. year. Yeah. That's why I'm giving him, that's why I'm saying. By the time he's 60. 50, he's probably got cyborg legs. <laughs> He just well, jumps I, over you. I guess our, our advances in medicine will actually be a detriment to me staying at my current age. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it depends how Space Jam he can get. Like, if he gets one of those booster jumps or Inspector Gadget legs for his for his investment, let's not forget he's rich. It's going to come into a factor. I mean, and like, I mean, I might be able to shoot from three, but he might block me from the foul throw line anyway. I, I like he he's also like he's not going to be in the gym as much he like he's not a natural shooter so like you'll get to lay off him a lot like when he's older he's he's gonna be clanking him because you know yeah. i don't know if you've noticed but my frame is not of that of a nfl blocker so i think he could just post me up from half court back me all the way and then dunk on top of me at 60. i, I think i'd have a chance at 60. <laughs> I think I'd have a chance at 60. I'm not sure about 50 with respect to that investment or whatever that he puts into it. All right. Last one. You've got it. All right. Which undrafted or international pro players are you most excited to see in this summer league? So uh, to my shame, I haven't been following the summer league too much. I've just been time poor. Um, but I'd have to say Josh Giddy. I'm assuming he's... Um, He's playing. Sometimes people miss out and they don't play summer league. But um, I know a couple of Aussies got picked up in free agency as well. Like one of the one of our Olympians got picked up. Uh, I don't think he's playing summer league, or I doubt it, because the Olympics just finished. But I would say Josh Giddy, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of our free agents that got signed, just to overall wish them well and hope they get some success. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, a couple like names that stuck out to me: Leandro Ball. I'd love to like see just like, I don't know, like he, he wasn't like when they were coming up, he was always the worst, but he wasn't as far behind. So like, I don't know, it'd be just kind of cool. Uh, him just seeing him a couple highlights, people going crazy about, you know, having all three of them in the league and on the same team or whatever. Uh, and then I, I like to just like, I like to see some like college players of the past or ones that didn't, uh, quite get drafted so like jimmer for in it again this year i think and he's just like a guy that seems like he'll be in summer league every year but never actually i don't even think he like wants to go back to the nba necessarily just because like <laughs> he's doing it like he's doing his thing in in china or wherever he is and you know he's probably making more money than he would in the nba because he's like a star there uh and then like a couple former duke players that i wouldn't mind uh seeing i think dj stewart's on a team somewhere um and then, <laughs> uh who else was it there was one more i thought oh jay huff from virginia oh and the other one from duke was uh justin robinson so uh the admiral's son he went to duke and he was like a he was like a, a bench player and like finally started to get burned in his like senior year uh so he wasn't like a big time recruit he might have even been a walk-on uh but he kind of like had some moments in his last year, mainly because Duke wasn't like that great, but he has like, he has his like dad's built, but he's just like shorter and not as Is he left-handed? I don't know if he's left-handed though. 
Uh, but if he's right-handed, there's no point. <laughs> it was just always like cool to see his dad in the stands every time, even though like, you know, his son wasn't even necessarily playing or whatever. So he's one that I just like, and of course, you know what team he's on, right? Yeah. 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 He's on the Spurs um, summer league. All right, man. Thanks for joining me. That is it. That's all the questions we had. If you want to join our discord, there's a really cool community, um, building there and the link is in the description below and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. If you got any value out of this video, please consider liking and or subscribing. And if you want to enter that Lucky Maniki NFT competition, follow the description below, enter hashtag ballers blockchain into their Discord general chat and good luck. See you in the next video. Bye.